So one thing that surprised people in 2016 when President Trump won that election in a real shock to a lot of people, uh, maybe not to those who follow closely day to day the polling. And, cer- I think- and certainly not to me. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things that happened in that election, and I would argue it has happened several times in the past when there have been wave elections, is the electorate fundamentally changed. There was a new group of people, whether by because they aged into voting age or because people who typically sat on the sideline got off the sideline and actively participated, maybe for the first time in their life or for the first time in a long time. Is there anything in the electorate in the United States today that you see of either people coming in off the sidelines, maybe stepping out of the electoral political scene, new generation coming in? Is there something in who's going to vote in November that we should be paying attention to that could just change the whole conversation of this election? Well, the past three cycles, we've seen incredible voter participation rates amongst younger people um, through the roof. Uh Still not probably at what they should be, but they are through the roof against historic norms. Um, Young people are obsessively progressive. Um, At least two thirds of both millennials and Gen Z consider themselves to be liberals and or progressives. On the upper end, it's about a third and a third and a third of, of older adults, those being, you know, 65 and above. Uh, the boomers. Um, about a third of them are considered to be conservative, a third of them are considered to be independent, and a third are considered to be liberal or left-leaning. And I would say of those independents, they probably lean a bit more conservative than liberal, but I digress. This is a numbers game now. So yes, older voters do tend to vote at a higher rate than younger voters, but every year we lose about 2 million older voters. They, they, they exit. They, they expire. They're no longer here because they've died. Um, at the same time, we're gaining about 2 million Gen Z voters or eligible Gen Z voters. So what we're seeing is a, a generational shift that's happening in political alignment right now. You know, people have always said, if you're young, you're liberal. If you're old, you're more conservative. But right now we're not seeing big moves into conservatism amongst Gen X and millennials. So that may not hold true for the future. I think for this election, um, we're also going to see an even greater, perhaps more stark divide between urban and rural counties, urban and rural states. Um, As you know from my work, um, urban areas, the big states remain relatively young, so they've gone bluer over time. In the more rural or Rust Belt states, some of the southern states, um, they've gone more red. Well, why is that? Well, they've gotten a lot older and they've remained somewhat monocultural. So these are the folks that, that um, you know, actively support abortion bans. They tend to be more um, pro-religion. They tend to be more pro-gun. Um, And on a national election, this is where things get a little goopy, if I can use that word, goopy. Um, They have an outsized voice now in the national elections. So are people coming off the sidelines? I think women will continue to play a a decisive role in in the election. I think it's fairly common um, belief at this point that suburban moms are the ones that that really are, are making these um, big choices for us at the end of the day outside of Philadelphia, Pittsburgh in particular. They're the ones that are going to decide this for us. 